from five minute ab workouts to miracle ab exercises to crazy ab moves that you have never seen that you're probably not gonna be able to do, sometimes even throwing barbells around so you can train your abs, I don't get it. Fitness social media is overloaded with dumb ab exercises that won't actually build the strong, bulletproof core you actually need in a rational manner. Yes, your core serves a host of different functions and is capable of everything from twisting to bracing to flexing your spine. But how do we train it? By skipping Instagram stupidity and focusing on better moves, that's what we're gonna hit on today's don't list. We're gonna start with a classic, the crunch. And these are a staple move, you think, but they're not actually challenging your abs or a big range of motion. They're not giving you much load or time and retention, and they're really only working your abs in the flex position. That's why we wanna ditch the crunch. Instead, we wanna focus on an exercise like the cable crunch. Now, this is something you're gonna be able to load a lot more aggressively, and it's gonna take you through a greater range of motion. And one of the biggest things we wanna think about when we're training abs is something called anti-extension. We want load as we're getting back to that stretch position, that's what you're gonna get out of the cable crunch. You don't get a hint of that with the standard crunch. As much as we think planks are amazing when people can hold them for five, 10, 15 minutes and land in record books, note this about the guys who are holding the planks. They do not have terrific six packs. They do not have impressive core strength. And these aren't the people who are showcasing rotational power. The plank loses its value after 40 seconds or so. So what we wanna do instead of wasting our time by doing planks is we wanna to get to dynamic planks. We want to find moves that are going to challenge rotation, they're going to challenge anti-extension. When we're in that plank position, we want to think of that as a starting point. So do moves like plank shoulder taps and long lever planks, which are really, really great for anti-extension. The plank isn't a bad starting point if you are a very, very beginner. But once you advance, once you start to understand that you can hold a plank and control that for 60 seconds, we want to move on to moves that are actually going to build our core, and that is not the world record plank. Yes, you'll see plenty of jack guys doing side bends on Instagram but know that they're building their abs with the moves that they're not showing you on Instagram. Technically, side bends can work, but it's just not the best use of your time because it's really, really easy to go through that side bend motion just because of the placement of the load and let it be driven by something other than our core, and that is not gonna get us to the goals we actually want. Instead of doing side bends, we wanna think about doing a move called the overhead pile-up press. Now, this is going to produce really similar tension for our obliques and abs, as exactly what we're gonna get, or we think we're getting with the side bend, except it's a lot easier to stay focused and the placement of the load over our head is really gonna keep more tension on our abs for the entire life of the set. That's exactly what we want. We're gonna get a lot deeper of a contraction and we're gonna really feel what we're doing. Another option here is a single arm farmer's walk. That is a dynamic, think of that as a dynamic side bend. We're essentially contracting our abs and maintaining stability in one position while we have to move. That's very similar to what we were talking about with the dynamic plank, and it's a lot better than a side bend. One of the most popular moves I see in all these five minute ab workouts and all these five minute workouts that people can do in their bedrooms and anywhere is something called the reverse crunch. And people are gonna tell you that this is working your lower abs. Truth is, technically they're right, but this move is also really, really easy to cheat on and to avoid creating proper core tension with, and that's just not gonna get you what you need. You wind up doing this move too fast, and you wind up not getting anything out of the reverse crunch. So what we wanna do, really, if we really want six-pack abs, we wanna find a more challenging move that's still gonna let us attack our lower abs and it's gonna challenge us a little bit more in anti-extension. That exercise is any hanging leg lift variation. When we're in a hanging leg lift, the great thing here that happens is we have tension on our abs and we can maintain tension on our core when we are in the bottom of the exercise. That's where we're gonna get that really great anti-extension effect. You will immediately know this too for one simple reason. You're not gonna be able to do as many reps of hanging leg lifts as you can do reverse crunches. You can do reverse crunches all day, but if you learn the hanging leg lift, you're gonna get fewer reps and a lot more production out of it. Another way too popular move that we see in a lot of these five minute ab workouts is something called the bicycle crunch. And it sounds fancy, it looks fancy, but it is way too easy to cheat on the bicycle crunch and people move through it way too fast. And there are too many moments in the bicycle crunch where there just is intention on our abs. Very often, we don't maintain that hollow position when we're doing the bicycle crunch. And if we don't maintain that, then that's tension coming off of our core. We're just not getting as much out of this as we could. Instead, if we're looking for a move that creates some rotation and gets our legs moving individually while still challenging our abs, we want to grab kettlebells or even dumbbells and we want to go to something called a front rack march. If you do this for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, you're going to get your heart rate up. You're going to be challenging your core from a balance standpoint and there's just a lot more going on. Even just holding the front rack is really underrated for your abs. So that's one really great move we can go to. And if you want a real challenge from a rotational standpoint, then we're gonna go to a half kneeling kettlebell windmill. Now we're getting tremendous rotation. We take our core through a great range of 
rotational movement, and we get a whole ton out of those. So that is a lot better for your core than any of those five-minute ab moves. Get those moves off of your list and focus on the moves that we gave you instead.